In syringomyelia, syrinx means cyst or cavity, and myelia means a condition of the spinal cord. So syringomyelia is a cystic enlargement of the spinal cord, and it typically starts medially and enlarges outward, eventually damaging the spinal thalamic tract, which is a part of the spinal cord that sends sensory signals about pain, pressure, temperature, and touch to the brain. Now, the spinal cord itself is composed of both gray and white matter. Gray matter is found within the medial portion of the spinal cord and is shaped like a butterfly. This is where the cell bodies of different neurons can be found. In the center of the gray matter, there's a small cavity called the central canal, which is filled with cerebrospinal fluid. Cerebrospinal fluid helps provide nutrients and mechanical support to the brain and spinal cord. Surrounding the gray matter is white matter, which consists of the axons of various neurons. The spinal cord has different neural tracts that carry sensory information to and from the brain. The cortical spinal tract is a descending pathway which carries motor information from the brain to various muscles. The dorsal column, found in the posterior portion of the spinal cord, is responsible for sending pressure, vibration, fine touch, and proprioception, or the awareness of one's body in space. Then there's the spinothalamic tract, which is divided into two distinct tracts. The lateral spinothalamic tract, which is responsible for sensing pain, pressure, and temperature, as well as the anterior spinothalamic tract, which senses crude touch. The spinothalamic tract carries all of this sensory information from the spine up to the thalamus of the brain, where the information is processed. This happens through three neurons that synapse with one another. First, a primary neuron carries sensory information, like pain, from the skin to the dorsal horn of the spinal cord, where it synapses with a secondary neuron. The secondary neuron ascends one to two vertebral levels, and decussates or crosses to the opposite side of the spinal cord via an area of white matter called the anterior white commissure. The secondary neuron then ascends up the length of the spinal cord via the anterior or lateral spinothalamic tracts eventually synapsing at the ventral posterior nuclei of the thalamus. Finally, from there, a third neuron arises from nuclei in the thalamus and carries the signal to the primary sensory cortex, or the post-central gyrus of the brain where the sensory signal is interpreted. In syringomyelia, the central canal of the spinal cord that houses the cerebrospinal fluid gradually expands. This expansion may be caused by acquired factors, but the main cause of syringomyelia is a congenital condition called Chiari malformation type 1. In this condition, the cerebellar and brainstem tissues slip down into the foramen magnum, the opening at the base of the skull. This malformation results in a variety of balance and movement symptoms related to the cerebellum and usually results in hydrocephalus, an abnormal accumulation of cerebrospinal fluid in the brain. Normally, cerebrospinal fluid would flow through the four ventricles of the brain, and after the fourth ventricle, the fluid would have two options. It could enter the ventricular system through openings called the medial and lateral apertures, and into the subarachnoid space where it's reabsorbed. Alternatively, the fluid could go into the spinal canal. In Chiari malformations, however, the displacement of the cerebellum ends up blocking the openings where cerebrospinal fluid would exit into the subarachnoid space. As a result, the fluid backs up within the spinal canal, eventually causing the spinal canal to widen, and this leads to syringomyelia. Aside from Chiari malformations, syringomyelia can also be caused by any acquired condition that blocks the flow of cerebrospinal fluid, like a tumor. Alternatively, it can be caused by damage to the spinal cord, which results in an enlarged spinal canal. Examples of that include spinal cord trauma, spinal tumors, and spinal cord abscess. Regardless of the cause, the expansion of the central canal in syringomyelia interferes with the fibers within the anterior white commissure of the spinothalamic tract. This leads to the loss of pain, pressure, temperature, and crude touch. As the central canal cavity expands, it damages the lower motor neurons connected to the corticospinal tract, which leads to muscle atrophy, muscle weakness, and paralysis. Syringomyelia usually spares the dorsal column, so sensations of pressure, vibrations, fine touch, 
and proprioception typically remain intact. Although it sounds nice to not feel pain, this can lead to several problems. One of these is neuropathic arthropathy, or Charcot joints, which is when there's repeated trauma and inflammation in a joint since there's no pain response. In syringomyelia, this is particularly seen in the shoulders. Lastly, the widening spinal canal can also lead to changes in the spine like scoliosis, which is a sideways curvature of the spine. Classically, the destruction of the spinothalamic tract leads to the bilateral loss of pain and temperature in the upper extremities and back, which is often described as a cape-like distribution due to damage to these tracts at the level of the cervical spine, usually C4 to C6. However, this could also lead to dysesthetic pain, which is typically described as an abnormal burning pain in the shoulder and neck regions. Motor symptoms include weakness, muscle atrophy, and paralysis when lower motor neurons are damaged. Syringomyelia is typically diagnosed using an MRI, which can help visualize the syrinx as well as possible causes like Chiari malformation and spinal tumors. Treatment of syringomyelia typically depends on the symptoms. Analgesics can be used if mild pains are the only symptom. If signs of neurodegeneration are present, a posterior fossa decompression surgery is required. This procedure is a type of craniotomy where a portion of the back of the skull is removed in order to widen the foramen magnum, which helps release the buildup of pressure. If hydrocephalus is present, a shunt to drain the excess fluid within the brain might also be required. Catheters may also be used to drain the syrinx directly. Alright, as a quick recap. Syringomyelia occurs when a fluid-filled cavity, or syrinx, develops within the spinal cord and it is most commonly caused by Chiari malformation. The expanding cavity interferes with the spinal thalamic tract, which is responsible for pain, pressure, temperature, and crude touch, and results in the loss of these sensations in a cape-like distribution along the arms and back. Syringomyelia is also commonly associated with scoliosis and Charcot joints. Helping current and future clinicians focus, learn, retain, and thrive. Learn more.